Hello, and welcome to Hanksy Panksy Season 3 Final Chapter Prologue, a podcast where two dumb idiot best friends uh, absconded with Tom Hanks, purloined Dwayne Johnson, and are about to be absolutely mugged by... Um, hmm. Reading here, uh, uh, Ken Reefer? Ken, Ken Reefer. Ken Reefer? I... I'm not totally sure who that is. Uh, I'm Sam Siegel, and I'm stealing your dancing knee. Oh, mm-hmm. I did. I didn't know specifically one of my knees was meant for dancing. Yeah, uh, and actually, I say dancing. It is your gymnastics knee. Yeah, uh, the the line between the two is somewhat blurry this week. Uh huh. Yeah, because there is a gymnastics off. It's not a dance off. Yeah. Then there is a lot of dancing. Anyway, we'll get to it. Sure. Uh, I am Luke Patrick. I'm the other dumb idiot. This week, I am a security guard. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who's going to smoke a reefer and watch you do a seductive dance. Oh, uh, so one of the good ones. One of the good ones. Yeah. Weirdly, I'm the good guy in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not a lot of good guys. No. Uh, in this one. Um, which I guess we should we dig right into. Um, this is 1986's Flying, or 1986's Dream to Believe, or 1986's uh, Teenage Dream. Yeah. Couldn't any, pick, you know? Any Couldn't of pick the a above. title. <laughs> a Canadian movie. Mm, Luke, how uh, was that watch of yours? Well, Sam, for the first time this season... Uh, I think I booted up YouTube, Mm -hmm. just did a cheeky little search for one of those titles. Couldn't tell you which one I picked actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then just appended Ken, Ken, still unfamiliar with this guy, Ken Reefer's name onto the search. Yeah. I think it's Keanu Reeves. That doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right. I think it's Keith Reginald. Keith Reginald. Um, Is that? Yeah, I think Keith yeah, Reginald. I think Keith, Reggie Keith. Um, I, here's the thing, never seen the guy before. No, no idea who this guy, well, we'll get into it. I mean, he's mm-hmm. in this flick kind of a lot. Yeah. Anyway, uh, booted up YouTube and then pressed the button and lo and behold, do you know what 200p looks like blown up on a 4K TV? Uh, yeah, Luke. I, yeah, I, you know, you're asking one of the few people who does actually know what this it looks like. Yeah, and it, what's the opposite of Dolby Atmos sound? It would be like a Buck's, can, a tin can with a, a tin can, <laughs> uh, Buck's cheap ass tin can on a string audio services, mm-hmm. uh, serviced by Buck himself. Yeah, it's it was an experience to behold an hour and a half of this movie. Uh, I could barely understand anything. Mm-hmm. There were no subtitles available. I couldn't couldn't really make out a lot of the words. Uh, it was pretty blurry most of the time. But I will say, I had a pretty good time with the watch aspect of this. Okay. Just because the novelty. It takes me right back to the good old days of Tom Hanks. Mm-hmm. When we would be watching like Bosom Buddies clips on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was say, yeah. It's it's also an interesting experience to watch something with like a pretty at least to us unknown actor. Yeah. Uh, this uh Keevan Keevan Reeven. Richards? Mm, Keevan Richards. Yeah. yeah. Famous famously not the guitarist for the Rolling Stones. No. Uh Keevan Richards. Uh I know if folks at home are confused, that would be Keith Richards. Uh, right yeah uh, though i think they're cousins i think they are probably cousins yeah uh yeah. yeah so we'll get into this uh movie starring olivia dabo and uh keevan richards here mm-hmm. in a second uh but uh how uh, how is your watch luke i went to texarkana yesterday you drove to texarkana mm-hmm. holy shit my guy yeah f- uh for for work I uh-huh. assume so. The only other reason to go to Texarkana, I assume, is like a border drug deal. I'm glad you mentioned the border because I feel like not a lot of people, not enough people are talking about how difficult it is to um, cross into the Lone Star Republic these days. 
Oh. Um, because like they stop you at the border and they search your car for um, any plan B, any vaccines. And this is their new one because uh, this, again, not getting a lot of press here in these old United States. But in the Lone Star Republic, you have to have a gun. Oh, and well, yeah. Mad Max rules. You got to be armed if you're going to have Texas. A gun. And so I, I was stopped at the border for like an hour. I yeah. think, and uh, I, you know, I, I had brought an airsoft pistol because I thought that that would count, and they said, no, absolutely yeah, not. Definitely they, not. They won't even take a twenty two anymore. What? <laughs> you need a Desert Eagle to get into? You you have to have a higher caliber than twenty two. That's the rule. Jesus um, Christ. It's, Texas? It's rough. Well, well used to be texas it is the lone star republic now the and artist I, formerly known as texas i think the thing is most people are busy talking about crossing the dmz um from the city state of disney into mm -hmm. the democratic people's republic of sunshine and freedom <laughs> yeah a lot of people uh end up talking about those th that specific border and look it's rough we all know yeah. We know about the, the turrets, but like, it's just, it's tough. It's yeah. tough getting to the Lone Star Republic these days. Yeah. And it didn't help that your, your trunk was just full of vaccines and plan B. Uh, it was a problem. Yeah. 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 But you know, you, you pay them off because I, I mean, um, the, the thing is us dollars worth a whole lot there. Okay. Because um, <laughs> Trump bucks are not actually doing all that well. Yeah. And then the, the armadillo dollar turns out yeah. not backed by anything. So not, not backed at all. Um, because the, they kept saying backing currency is woke. And so they just didn't back their currency. Um, yeah. And so you seriously, you, you give those border guards like, three dollars and they <laughs> they wept they said i i can eat for four years off of this yeah do you know how many trump bucks this is worth billions it's, it's all of them mm -hmm. basically yeah so um and and then you know the other problem is i'm there for like a public health thing so i've got all this like literature yeah uh, oh i think that's almost more dangerous than the trunk full of vaccines and plan b they don't like written things anymore. No. Written documents, books, um, even like doodles with like comics with too many words. Yeah. It's a it's a real problem. Um so yeah, uh I, I did go to Texarkana. It is a two hour and fifteen minute drive each way yeah. for a um one hour meeting. <laughs> Plus the border crossing time. Plus the border crossing time. And half the people who were supposed to attend the meeting uh, didn't show up. Jesus Christ, so, my so dude. I, I, drove, I drove four and a half hours yesterday to go show a, an hour-long video to six people. Jesus Christ. And also, <laughs> and then, and then I think... Bought a bunch of chocolates and then drove home. <laughs> <laughs> uh that's you know what the the lone star republic the thing about it is that it is kind of becoming a mad max hellscape but the chocolate oh it, my god you know the couple that i had when i got home because i didn't really have much of an appetite because i was so tired yeah um they were really good yeah yeah um say what but... you will about the state of their economy or social sort of standing Mm -hmm, but goddamn, do those nuts make a good chocolate boy it's it's good mm -hmm. um smuggling them back through the border did cost me another three dollars <laughs> um <laughs> but to grant someone's dreams like that yeah priceless you just gave those border guards eight years worth of food security so mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh and you know it's it is special to be able to uh give back to um you know the lone star gestapo um, 
but but yeah. we all know how like they get pressed into service so, yeah it's you know, mandatory so uh, mandatory. they they say every inch of the lone star republic's uh border has to be monitored yeah which is really it folks at home or abroad if you're not aware it looks like hands across america mm-hmm. it's literally just a bunch of people holding hands to secure the entire texas border yeah and those hands are shaky because they can't afford to eat because yeah. again uh arm armadillo dollars uh they call them dillo dollars dillo dollars uh, just worthless yeah absolutely worthless and again we I know we keep saying Trump bucks and Dillo dollars. The thing is, Dillo dollars are actually backed by Trump bucks, which are backed by nothing. Yeah. Nothing but a closet full of old steaks. Oh, no. Not the yeah. Trump steaks. The Trump steaks. Oh. <laughs> They've just been sitting in a closet. Not even refrigerated. Oh, good God. They're vacuum That's not... sealed so you can't smell them. Yeah. But if you see them... Uh, I've heard that you do go blind immediately. Yeah, and if you could, God forbid, get one of those puppies open, it would mm-hmm. be the mustard gas that would leak out of that thing mm-hmm. would would kill off half of the the. Uh, well, I guess it's not a state anymore. Half the Lone Star Republic. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I will say, um, and and I don't I don't feel like I'm saying anything like too controversial here. I'm I'm just thankful that back in the um back in the 30s we had the the Sui skirmishes that did escalate here into the full Razorback Rebellion. Okay. Um, that did mean that we did not join the Lone Star Republic. I see. Because if you remember all those years ago, there was a lot of saber rattling mm. uh, over joining the the Lone Star Republic. And um, and so that you know, we had the you remember the scattered Sui skirmishes. Um, sure. That that didn't end up escalating into the the full blown statewide Razorback Rebellion. Yeah. Um it was hard fighting. Um, yeah. Which is it's funny because um yeah, Colorado at the same time was actually fighting a war with Texas, which no one likes to talk about. No one talks um, about that one. Yeah, uh, it's weird. Uh, and we did win, by the way. So yeah. much like the Razorback Rebellion did beat back the the Lone Star Republicans. Do you do you remember what they named that war? The the Colorado one. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Well, I know that uh, the the main fighting force was known as the Reefer Brigade. That's right. Yeah. And they were famous for being one of only a few armies in history to be blazed. The entire time. Which is interesting because, you know, like when the Nazis all those years ago uh, were fueled mostly by amphetamines. Yes. Blitzkrieg. You would think that that's a better tack than um, getting just fucking zooted (laughs) and then going into battle. (laughs) Yeah, it's almost it turns out it's almost a scare tactic because like a fish concert, you could see the haze coming off of the approaching masses. I, um, I do remember uh, reading the accounts um, of the enemy's eyes watering from yeah. the sting of the smoke <laughs> uh, that they had not, you know, gotten acclimated to at all. Yeah. And uh, plus, uh, you know, these guys, uh, these folks from Colorado were were acclimated to fighting while absolutely out of their gourds. Mm-hmm, yeah. uh, but then, you know, you blow a couple of bong hits at some Lone Star Republicans Mm-hmm. these folks have never even they they don't know what a jazz cigarette is at all no 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 no, not at all yeah um now if it was a if it was a good old-fashioned american well i guess lone star republican marlboro sure oh yeah yeah uh, that would be no problem or but, uh, or a cures or a cures uh, but um but we no 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 no, 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 no not a bit uh, you know what's also weird about both of these these uh, sort of fights uh-huh. uh, on the Texas side? Do you know who was at both in the 1800s? Uh, was it Tom Hanks? Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. Who to thunk it? He was now, there fighting for the Lone Star Republic. Now, why do you say the 1800s? Isn't that the t- time period we're talking about? No, this was... Uh, pfft. 
20 odd years ago back oh in the, back in the 2030s oh in the 2030s okay yeah. yeah sorry you know what it's hard to remember between the pandemic the pandemic and the actual economic collapse of the yeah. former the artist formerly known as the united states the, I the just second like pandemic live. and then yeah. the dissolution of the the eu yeah um over we never thought it would happen but the dissolution of the eu over tomato regulations yeah and then there was also that kerfuffle with the fact that france could just get unpasteurized cheese mm -hmm. uh all those years that finally blew up too it was yeah and then we are with that the eu you know the the, the italy fully collapsed yeah so it's now back into just sort of a hodgepodge of various states um most of which under the the control of uh the pope yeah, the uh, Pope, but I do have all of, I got a lot of betting money on the ghost of Napoleon, which is currently ravaging Europe. Yes, yeah, I've heard about that diarrheal disease. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's taken a lot of people. I like yours better. I was thinking of, uh, how funny it would be if a group of like French necromancers brought back Napoleon, mm -hmm. but I think yours is funnier. <laughs> Oh no, they did that too. <laughs> oh yeah, how, could, how silly of me. Yeah, how could yeah, I forget? No, they they brought him back, and then um he uh they because they went to that island that yeah. he was on yeah. for a long time. You know, mm -hmm. please name the island. I can't remember. Majorca, whatever. Um, you know where he was exiled to. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, they they raised him from the dead. And then they immediately got Napoleon's ghost, the horrible diarrheal disease. They <laughs> thought they had recovered. <laughs> and when they took that easy jet flight back to their lair, um, all their necromancer buddies also got very, really bad diarrhea. Again, yeah, Napoleon's ghost. Um, and then it, just, it spread like wildfire. Uh, like, remember when we thought COVID-19 was bad? And then we thought um, COVID-19 2 electric boogaloo was worse. Which was, it's weird that Fauci named that. I still don't is, quite get that. It's but. strange that he named that. But I mean, who could argue with him under under the iron fist of his rule? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When uh, El Presidente Fauci came out with mm -hmm. uh, with the, the ruling in that one, we all just said that we had to nod our heads and go with the uh, COVID-19 to electric boogaloo i mean after uh his meteoric rise after he uh murdered rand paul during a senate hearing mm -hmm. um which i mean you remember the parades yeah um it like no one was sad about that it was kind of interesting because you would because he kept getting voted into office rand paul um and then fauci murdered him right in the center yeah. of those those senate hearings um and everyone clapped and then nationwide except you know the Lone star republic and the democratic people's republic of sunshine and freedom uh, parades everywhere yeah um and then we just he, he made himself god king mm -hmm. and nobody said anything about we were all kind of fine with it yeah and then i mean he did get us through the first pandemic so he got we, us through the first pandemic. we kind of owed him something and then he made the second pandemic yeah because um, it's like yeah that's when things kind of started going downhill, I feel like. Yeah, I think so. Um, but yeah, but uh, I guess, I guess, you know, once we're done recording this, uh, just a heads up, I do need to go. It's kind of early because I got to go jump in my Mad Max vehicle, mm, strap yeah. on the machine gun, get all that prepped. Oh, you mean um, your new cyber truck? My new cyber truck. Because uh, everyone gets issued those. Because. <sighs> I don't know why I keep reminding you of policies that have happened, but yeah, everybody we, knows these. Yeah. But you know, uh, three years ago when Chester Cheeto killed uh, Anthony Fauci on national television and then mm -hmm. took over running the country. Um, and he said, everyone has to have a weaponized cyber truck. Yeah. Um, whether or not it works in the rain. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and so we all have cyber trucks with 50 caliber turrets on them. Yeah, so I gotta I gotta take that I gotta leave a little early to go take that guy down to the artist formerly known as Target, which mm. was radically like 
I know you remember this, but like a few years ago, do you remember how they like had a coup? Like Walmart like took over the Walmart yeah. Hunter took over Target because it was too woke. Mm -hmm. They had a pride section for like a couple years. Yeah. 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 Uh, I still have their credit card though, so I I have to use them. It's the new regulations mean that right. I have to use them. So well, because uh, you know, since they're some of them that that escaped the the wrath of Walmart, yeah, ended up being under the protection of um the city state of Disney. Yeah. Um, which a lot of people keep calling Wokistan. Um. Which is frustrating because everyone knows that's California or what yeah. we used to, you know, what, what used to be California. Now yeah. it's actually Wilkistan. Um, <laughs> that yeah. whole, that whole seaboard actually united into Wilkistan. Yeah. Um, save for, and this is the confusing thing, man. So it, there's the other city state of Disney. Yeah, it's over in the middle of Wokus. But it's but why is it different from the one in Florida? Like they're not connected. They're not. It's very yeah. confusing. This is um they call it the city state of Disney 2.0. Yeah, which and again it's backed solely by cryptocurrency. Yeah. Walt um, coin. Yeah. It's confusing. Mm -hmm. It's a weird world we live in these days. It's strange. But can I say? Yeah. The mandatory Cheetos are pretty good. The mandatory Cheetos come in so many flavors mm -hmm. and are so tasty. Uh, like, yeah, it was really sad when we lost all those loved ones at the terrible, terrible battle of possum grape. Yeah. But, but, but the Cheetos do kind of heal that wound a little bit, don't you think? The Cheetos slap. They just came out with a buffalo flavor. They did came out come out with a buffalo flavor, you know, in honor of the the nuclear <laughs> destruction in the city of Buffalo. Yeah, um, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's a nice and plus, like you said, it's a nice little nod to the city of Buffalo. Mm -hmm. You know, the, where the, like every yeah. Cheeto has the name of someone who who <laughs> died in the nuclear blast at Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's a really nice way to honor yeah. um, that that heinous uh, Canadian terrorist attack. Yeah, you can really taste the radiation. Um, well, um, again, honor the victims, <laughs> not, not honor the terrorist attack, obviously. Yeah, I know, I'm following. I just like that they, they use like the irradiated dirt mm -hmm. of, from the crater that was Buffalo. Yeah, uh, it's so cool that my piss glows now. Yeah. It's pretty, like, you know how sometimes you go to the bathroom and you don't want to turn on the light because mm -hmm. you've been in sleepy time. Yeah. And you, But you need to pee? Yeah, not a problem. Yeah, you just piss on your hands and then use that as a flashlight <laughs> until you make it to the toilet. And then open the toilet and, you know, get blinded. Yeah, and I heard Dwayne The Rock Johnson is now selling his piss bottles uh, as lanterns. Which They're is great cool. lanterns. Great They're... for camping. They're great for camping, exactly. They're extremely renewable. You just fill him with more water mm -hmm. and government-mandated Cheetos, mm -hmm. and eventually you're going to get more of these lanterns. Yeah. Um, it, it's... Uh, I I love the branding, too. Um, in, enjoy the drain from Dwayne's main vein. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's mm -hmm. pretty... See, that's good. Like that, it's good. Yeah. It's a it's incredible that he's that well hydrated. Yeah, dude produces. He he produces. It's it's sad that they had to put him on that milking machine, but yeah. otherwise th the guy's a real champ. Yeah. That's why they made all those statues of him. I mean, that and the fact that he did align with the Walton Junta over uh Target. He, that it did help. It did yeah. help. So they those Waltons got a lot of money, especially now that they sort of ransacked Target. They executed yeah. the Target dog as a as a man. That was hard to watch. That was hard. <laughs> that was really hard to watch. <laughs> oh, it was so brutal. Um, uh, and but, this is an anthropomorphic dog, by the way. This is yeah, not a. Like, it was a guy in a dog costume. Right. It was basically a furry. Turns out a furry was running Target. Yeah, because the the dog that we remember from the commercials, long dead. 
Oh yeah. Um, from natural causes, you know. Yeah, absolutely. How do you think the war with Canada is going to end up going? I don't know. Cause those folks run on maple syrup and maple syrup only. Yeah. Yeah. And that's highly renewable, right? I mean, it is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they, they use a lot of it for their power plants now. Yeah. But I, I mean, I still think, you know, maple fusion, uh, those maple fusion rifles that they have. Yeah. Um, I, I've seen how they disintegrate people. It's pretty uh, rough. It's pretty rough to watch. And the other thing, too, is that no one told us that, it, like, none of the risk additions I've ever played had it where if you invade Canada in the winter, you're going to lose. Because we all yeah. knew this about Russia. Right. And but, we could have learned this from Napoleon's ghost, not the diarrheal the disease, di- yeah. but the resurrected ghost. Right. Haunting who, who my entered Orca. Eurovision and won? Yeah, man. Do you remember the name of the song he won with? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he just sang like a weird smashed up version of Mamma Mia. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And but then... it wasn't like none of the pieces quite fit. And so his mashup was like really just like a disjointed whatever he could remember from the flight over. Right. And then I like I think the most powerful part was when he took a a really runny dump on the Union Jack. Yeah. And people did love that. To be people honest, that's loved it. That's a get out of jail free card on Eurovision is mm-hmm. just doing anything uh less than ideal to the Union Jack. People do love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh cuz I um I, cause a lot of people were pretty mad because when uh, Roe Boris Johnson um, mm-hmm. became prime minister and then did un-Brexit where they joined the European Union yeah. only to then sabotage it by introducing those tomato regulations that ripped it asunder. Yeah. People were pretty mad. People were rightfully pretty pissed. Um, yeah, Napoleon's Ghost, I do remember, put out a lot of TikTok videos about it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I honestly, the only person I remember um being happy about that was Pope Jake Paul. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Pope Jake Paul. Can we talk about him for a second? I honestly, <laughs> we've been dancing around talking about Pope Jake Paul for quite some time now. I'm I'm dying to talk about Pope Jake Paul. Um Though I am terrified that he will actually come and uh, box me to death like he does for many of his uh, detractors. Yeah, so maybe we shouldn't. You know, it's a little risky. But I think we can all agree. Pretty absurd that he punched all the penises off the statues. Yeah. For for a... For a YouTube video, that was For like YouTube. Video. You were already Pope. You don't need. You had more subscribers than Mr. Beast. Yeah, who is now the Secretary of State. By the way, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's fine. And uh, you already had more YouTube subscribers once you became Pope. You didn't need to go around punching the dicks off of everything in the Vatican. Well, especially as part of an apology video for when he killed all the uh, buffalo mozzarella buffalo. Yeah. So they don't have that anymore. He killed yeah. all of them. He killed all of them. In that other YouTube video. Yeah, which again, it got crazy views. Folks, we need to stop feeding these monsters. We gotta stop it. Yeah, don't feed the, the wildlife, basically. Yeah, yeah. That That is what the title of his video was. Yeah. And then he kept killing all those buffalo mozzarella buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, don't feed the wildlife. Yeah. And now they don't have buffalo mozzarella. Anymore. And he's and this guy, this guy, can I just say it? This guy's the Pope now. He's the Pope. Who ah, what a world, man. I know. I know. What a world. <sighs> what was the plot of Flying <laughs> Dream to Believe Teenage Dream? <laughs> Oi. Um <laughs> 
Tuck, if you want to mark down in your notes how long it took us to get to the plot, it is 30 minutes and <laughs> counting. So <laughs> can, can I actually just say one one real thing? Yeah. About my drive to Texarkana yesterday. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, the reason we started all that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking about this fucking movie. Um so I uh, wanted to grab lunch somewhere. And so I stopped in Hope uh, oh, to grab a burger. For sure. Um, and uh, it was in a neat little restaurant. Um, but I had to get it to go. And they took forever to get me the burger. Um, and so I was getting pretty antsy because it was like 15 minutes before my meeting in uh, Texarkana. And Texarkana is not 15 minutes away from Hope. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, ooh, shit. Um. And so I I get the burger, uh, basically dash to my car. Uh, Google directs me instead of getting back on the interstate to like take a highway for like 15 miles until I get on the interstate. So I'm I'm trying to eat sweet potato fries. Yeah. Sp- screaming down this highway. Mm-hmm. And then I attempt to eat this burger, which I thought would be like wrapped up. It was not. It was just kind of loose in, in the box. Um <laughs> And it was it was really sloppy. Yeah, of course. That's why um, you wrap up a burger. Yeah, because it it was um, lettuce, tomato, uh, fried onion strings, cheese, and then boom sauce, which I had the thought after I ordered. Huh. I wonder if boom sauce is spicy. Hang on to that. Okay. So screaming down the road, I grabbed this sloppy fucking burger. I barely managed one bite. Um, it is delicious. Then I put it down because I'm about to drop it in my own lap. And I am having to wear dress clothes for this meeting. Uh Um, So the stakes pretty high. Stakes are very high. Um, So I put the burger back down. My mouth is now a flame because boom sauce, as it turns out, real spicy for me, at least. I don't think it's spicy for most people, but it is for me. Um, So I'm like, fuck, I can't eat this burger. I'll have heartburn the rest of the day. So I don't know what to do now. Um, and then I have sauce all over my beard. Amazing. So I'm trying to get that off. And then I look down and notice I have a big glob of sauce on my shirt. And I was like, God damn it. And so <laughs> trying to clean that up, still screaming down the road. Yeah, well, driving um, the whole time. Driving the whole time. Um, I, I get on uh, the interstate finally, end up in a uh, just like 10 minute stand still on the interstate because it goes down to one lane at one point because there were three construction dudes just looking over the side of one of those uh the uh shit what is it called uh the the metal fence like a rail like a guard yeah, the guard rail yeah yeah they're just looking over it they're huh. just standing on the side of the road kind of peering over the side of it at the ground um, and so we had a 10 minute standstill on the interstate because of, because of one closed lane. Classic which Arkansas, is cool. man. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, at that point, then I reached back into my bag and ate my snack lunch of peanut butter crackers, a pineapple cup, and some, uh, some, uh, Quaker <laughs> rice snacks. Um, I did make it to my meeting before anyone else, even though I was 40 minutes late. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I just like that the entire time that you're doing this meeting, the boom sauce is slowly melting a hole in your passenger seat as well. Yeah. Fortunately, I had name tags uh, for this meeting. So I, you know, I slapped one right over the very obvious stain. Boom sauce stain. Boom sauce. Amazing. Yeah. I applaud you for uh, going to Texarkana. Oh, um, look, I didn't have a choice. Yeah, I guess there that was, does. Yeah. Um, my boss couldn't make it to this meeting. Um, our business manager was going to go, but he ended up having too much work. And so I was the only person who could go. Yeah, so away you went, grabbing mm-hmm. boom sauce along mm-hmm. the way. Uh, I did have someone ask me recently, two people actually, ask me where Texarkana is. Utah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what I said. A lot of people um, don't know that because it's, you know, got the name of two states that aren't Utah. 
that aren't Utah. It's crazy. Texarkana, mm-hmm. Utah. Mm-hmm. Uh, those Mormons. Texarkana, Utah. <clears throat> yeah. God, it's got to stay on top of those Mormons. You just never know. You got to. Sam, do you, do you want the plot? Can I say one more thing about boob sauce? I would love it if you did. Because okay. I'm at this point, I'm deeply invested in not getting to the plot <laughs> to this um, movie. I do believe we've broken our record now, so that's fun. What um, was it before? Do you remember? It was uh, 35 minutes, I believe. Oh, nice. Yeah, we're uh, sailing past that. I can uh, I can double check that, though. Yeah, pull up your spreadsheet. Um, let's Kill see. Kill some more time. Yeah, longest time to get to the plot. Uh, hardball, 35 minutes and 29 seconds. We um, are 30 seconds past that, my hell guy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. <clears throat> The boom sauce, while being far too spicy for me, was tasty. But here's my issue. Yeah. All these fucking burger joints have their own burger sauce, right? Yeah. And they call it like boom sauce or shack sauce or dick sauce or cum sauce or, you know, like yum sauce. Yeah. They all have their own fucking name for it. And I just need to know what's in it. Yeah. This is important to me so that I can finish my burger. Yeah, well, especially while you're screaming down the highway. You want to well, know. Yeah, I need to know, hey, can, do I need to get this? Man, what is my hair doing? Um, I wasn't going to say anything, but I I don't fucking know, man. Yeah, I don't fucking either. Jesus. Um, but, I, like, I that burger tasted good. Yeah. But if I ate it, I my stomach would have been on fire all day. So if you had known that it was made out of ghost peppers. Yeah, I would have asked for it maybe on the side so that yeah. I could decide how much I wanted. Maybe that's the ticket. From now on, every burger, just ask for the, the cum sauce on the side. Or again, just put on your menu, you know, our our slick sauce yeah. is um, mayo with olive oil poured all over it. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. Our it's made mayo. with love juice is made with Carolina Reapers, mm-hmm. and uh, that's it. It's just mashed up Carolina Reapers. Mm-hmm. Boom sauce, of course, is uh, mayonnaise, mm-hmm. tomato ketchup, yeah, and a little bit of C four plastic explosive. This is exactly what I was going to say. I'm mm-hmm. glad we're still on the same brainwave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Can I also tell you about a new product that I've come mm-hmm. up with? I was Absolutely. thinking about it the other day. Um, why don't we drink monkey milk? Interesting. They're, so, they're like us. I just want to point out that this is getting dangerously close to talking about Moink. Well, my friend, it's an offshoot of Moink. Okay. Yeah. So we're taking the Moink proceeds and we're expanding the market. Yes. Okay. Um, I already have one angel investor for it. Nice. But um, I like they're like us. Apes. True. Yeah. So in fact, so why, that's, you know, why aren't we I'd drinking say, their milk? Yeah, it's almost like a square, you know, to, to a rectangle kind of scenario. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Over here, uh, so our like, relation to apes. Why aren't we out here milking chimps, bonobos, gorillas, and orangutans? Well, is it Uncanny Valley? Like, okay, well, one, we ain't drinking people milk. Says you. <laughs> Most people, yeah, yeah, <laughs> most people. And out here drinking people milk. So is that the problem? Is it that, or is gorilla milk an accessible pathway to drinking people milk? Could be. Um, and we're about to find that out when I start selling Prilk. It's the only milk that gives you that. <laughs> I love it. Sorry, I had to clear my throat. Oh no, you're um, fine. Yeah, I absolutely adore it. I just love. The marketing campaign, I think, is going to have to be, you know how you've always wanted to drink people milk? Well, here's your excuse. It's not quite a person. (laughs) Not quite there. (laughs) You Uh, can't hold a conversation with the person or with the animal that gives us this milk. So I think that's one campaign, right? Yeah. Because obviously, you know, we got to kind of ease people into it. But I think our commercials, do you remember those Snickers commercials? 
where it's like you're not you when you're hungry yes 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 i think it's a lot of people who like are like doing a sports right yeah they're doing a sports real hard and they're struggling right yeah and their teammate comes up and they're like hey hey jim bob you seem like you're lacking a bit of that (laughs) um you you gotta get that (laughs) in you so yeah why don't you have a nice hot glass? Sorry, a nice <laughs> tepid glass. A prick. Yeah, I actually have a refrigerator that I've configured to keep it at 75 degrees. 75. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's not body temperature. Yeah. And it's not quite room temperature. Nope. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just the a distressing nice, temperature. It's just a nice round 80 degrees yeah because this drink is a challenge you know Mm -hmm. it's not meant to you don't come home Mm -hmm. excuse me and slam one of these guys like you would a coors no of course not this isn't this isn't the lone star republic god damn it no this is a drink intended to challenge you Mm -hmm. with its it's kind of a lot of protein um so much protein so much protein and uh aggressive temperature Mm -hmm. yeah because again Mm -hmm. like if it was easy to drink how would you get that (laughs) out of it exactly yeah precisely and i think we'll really highlight that in the marketing uh what did you call this again prilk prilk okay yeah primate milk primate milk yeah i'm following yeah Um, prilk it's the only milk that gives you that (laughs) ah. yeah yeah I love it. Look, what is actually the plot of <laughs> Flying Dream, the Bully of Teenage Dream, the 1986 film? Here at 42 minutes, I guess we finally, uh, yeah. I guess it's finally time. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll keep it really simple. This movie came out two years after Footloose. Keep a note of that. Mm-hmm. Um, Robin is a Canadian gal with kind of a lot of problems. A distressing number of problems. Kind of a I lot of say. problems for being a senior in high school. Um, so she that actually was... answers a question for me. Okay. I didn't fucking know if they were in college or oh. high school or what. I think they're in high school. Okay, cool. I'm pretty sure because yeah, because everybody lives at home with their parents. So I'm gonna say it's high school. Oh yeah, that actually does make some sense. Yeah. Um Anyway, she starts at a new school. We come to find out that she was in a car wreck that killed her dad and took her dancing knee, really messed up her dancing knee, because she is a gymnast, a gymnast, if Mm -hmm. you will. A Uh, a gymnast? A gymnast. Uh, Mm -hmm. And so she sort of helps out with the gymnastics team, but there's these two gals that really hate her and make fun of her and are just Mm -hmm. mean to her. Yeah. Um, Folks, oh, and her mom is sick. Because mm-hmm. of course, and her, her stepdad stepdad is an alcoholic. Is an alcoholic asshole mm-hmm. who runs a sweat shop. It does appear to be literally a shop <laughs> where they just sweat people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not clear at all on what this place is. No, I think it's like a clothes cleaners. I think it's a cleaners, but for some reason, every time we see it, it looks like the darkest basement <laughs> you've ever seen, and it's a bunch of sweaty people. Sweaty and and look, I don't. I need to finish the sentence before it sounds really problematic. But sweaty like immigrants who seem like they are being held there against Uh-oh. their will. Yeah, there it is. Okay, good. Yeah, we looped yeah, it it's, back. It's not the fact that they are in <laughs> fact immigrants. It seems like he's exploiting them. Yeah, this seems like a human trafficking situation. Yeah, yeah, like, like... he's he's telling them you will sweat in this basement, or I will report you. Yeah, exactly. So, th- you're not kidding. Can I just say really quick? That is exactly what it looks like this place is. It's, it's and I wild. don't have an explanation for that. None. None. Um, so, anyway. Uh, Actually, the only explanation we get is, like, he's trying to do something. That's what her mom says. It's like, Jack's not a bad guy. He's trying to do something. Yeah. And that something does seem to be human trafficking (laughs) building a human trafficking network yeah it's confusing and distressing 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. Anyway, Robin kind of works in this place, mm-hmm. I guess, and so does her mom. But her mom doesn't show up for work at one point, and it's implied it's a different job. So I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, uh, folks, you know what's gonna happen. Uh, she's training in secret at this warehouse where these two guys sort of just watch her mm-hmm. um, and get high and dance and get high and dance. Uh, and she fights her way back onto the team. There's the squabbles with the mean girls, yada, yada, yada. Uh, all throughout this is uh, K- Kevin, Kevin Reeves. Uh, who I've never heard of. Yeah, like Kenneth Rutherford. Yeah, Kenneth Rutherford, I think is his name. Yeah. Is this uh quintessential nice guy who keeps asking her out and she keeps saying no, but eventually he wins her over and they become a couple. Uh so And they fuck. And they do fuck. I want to talk about the sex scene. Of course we're talking about the sex scene. In fact, that may be all we have time for is discussing the sex <laughs> scene. Um I, I mean I, I have some things to talk about. Okay, cool. Uh, anyway, so you can guess the plot. I mean, she's fighting her way onto the team. She's learning to dance again with her knee. Uh, she has a literal gymnastics off in this like greaser hangout where they do a bunch of tumbling like in public and Mm -hmm. the people are like, woo, including Kiefer, Kiefer Reeves. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, eventually there's a big, there's regionals. You know, if whatever those are, um, and she she wins them by a hair, and Jack gets the snot beat out of or her stepdad gets the snot beat out mm-hmm. of him, uh, and she says she loves uh, Keanu. I think I don't know Ke- Keanu Reeves. Um, Ke- Ken Reeves. Kenu. Ken- Kenu sounds right. Kenu Reef. Kenu Reef. um but a critical thing to i okay well let's talk about it but i want to get we'll do it in the review section sam what's your one word for this movie oh uh shit i i did uh, disjointed disjointed's a good one my word is going to be dancey dancey okay yeah because this is the main thing i want to talk about this movie again two years after footloose is basically a music video yes there's just like there's like 10 extended sequences where 80s music is like da 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 and there's like people dancing to it. Dancing or like uh running in a montage. Yeah. Um, or in one very special sequence. Humping. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I it is it is a deeply strange movie um mm-hmm. and I think we can all agree boring and worthless. <laughs> yeah. Um I will concede the point. I don't know is Keanu load bearing in this movie? I think so. I think so sadly. I do think this one serves as a good final chapter prologue Redux 2.8. Yeah, cuz like he's there and he does some things and then she fucks him. Yeah. Um but, uh, I, with one exception, this movie feels a lot like an after school special. Okay. Because it's got, you know, a lot of the like tropes of just like um, you know, like the mean rich girls and like the like kind of disconnected um like coach who like isn't really all that supportive but is kind of supportive but then uses her yeah uh and seems like maybe she would have a doping scheme going on in the background no she 100 percent does yeah 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 <laughs> uh they, they skip all the scenes where she's giving all these gymnast shots in their ass uh right before they go on yeah um and then like all the adults are really concerned with how how the kids are dressed. Yeah. There's a lot of talk about adults being mad about how people are dressed. Yeah. Um and then you know you've got the you've got the gymnast fight, the gymnastics off. Yeah. Uh which again is broken up by this uh 
hardcore doping coach. Which is uh, also hilarious because it's clearly stunt doubles. Because mm -hmm. the like the actor will like start mm -hmm. to do a tumble and then it like hard cuts to someone tumbling and then yes. hard cuts again to them like whoa like <laughs> wow i just did that yes. now you didn't man it's pretty obvious um it's just i don't know and and like she ends up doing a great job in the end and like kind of nothing ever really matters and it's just about like triumph of like the spirit i guess dare to dream yeah dare to sure. dream um because uh like i can't dream to believe that this is a good movie yeah um it, so so it's just it's very hokey hokey is such a good word for it but it's also not hokey enough to be like a hallmark movie like the yeah. production quality <clears throat> isn't there weirdly to make it a no. hallmark movie um i just <sighs> are hallmark movies the equivalent the movie equivalent of a box cake i think so i think so so this movie it's is like movie by numbers yeah exactly because yeah. it's like sure it's a box cake so it's not going to be incredible but it's gonna be mm -hmm. pretty good I mean, I was bored out of my fucking mind. Yeah. Um, and I I hated watching this from taint to tip. Oh yeah, yeah. No, this movie isn't a Hallmark movie. I'm just oh, comparing. Okay. I'm comparing it to a Hallmark I movie. See, I see. I see. Which I see. is actually like a box cake. This movie is like an all recipes recipe, where they mm. substituted instead of butter. They were like, "What if I used avocados?" And then wrote right. in a review and were like, "I used avocados instead of butter. It tasted like butt." Yeah, it tasted like guacamole with yeah. too much sugar. In it. Yeah. Um, and it's like, yeah, this was a red velvet cake. Yeah. Um, I just, I, uh, it felt real long. Um, yeah, it did. It did we also had a, had a pill plot that uh, came as quickly as it went. Yeah, now walk me through that, because I don't remember a pill plot. Okay, so Robin's friend oh, uh, gets, like, yes. unsteady on the balance beam or whatever, um, or the hobby. I don't know what it's actually called. I don't know. The, Do I look like a gymnast to you? <laughs> the beam. <laughs> the beam. Uh, she falls off, and then the coach is like, these aren't the pills that I gave you. These yeah. are diet pills. Um. So what pills are you giving them, coach? <laughs> and then, um, and that's the end of it. Coach yeah. is like, I'm going to tell your parents. And then we never revisit it. No, not going to follow up on that one at all. Yeah. Um, there's some gross kissing. Yeah. Um, I like the scenes are not at all connected to each other. They just, it's just like things happen like a scene will happen and then it will end abruptly and then a new scene is happening and yeah. the connection between the two is like the nah. only connection between scenes is that they are set to cheesy 80s dance music yes um and then uh, like i don't know if you had this problem um but i found that i know so little about gymnastics yeah I had no idea if anyone was doing a good job or not. I have no idea. Yeah. Because, like, especially in the final, like, competition, um, it it would look to me like one of them faltered, and then they'd give the score, and it was, like, 950. And I was like, Which, I guess I don't even know good. if that's good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, that seems... <laughs> I guess they did a good job? I don't know. Is a 1,000 perfect? Like, is, I guess. I don't it, know. And so... I, I knew nothing about what was happening. Um, but. Uh, I, Which is a good point because like other sports movies mm -hmm. will go to great lengths to teach you the sport as you go along. There's yes. a nice handy yes. way to do that because the person that like gets into the sport or whatever doesn't know it. And so the other people teach them how to play it. It's a nice little exposition tool. But she already came out of the, the jump on this one, a pretty good gymnast. Yes. In fact, she did. Okay, that's the other bizarre thing about this is that, like, 
she's training mm -hmm. but every time she does it for anybody they're all like you're so good yeah they're like oh you're amazing uh it's just your knee um so is her knee really a problem i don't know because also like when her um alcoholic stepdad like smacks her she falls to the ground lands on her knee you hear her go oh my knee and then it is not an issue yeah at all yeah because i thought maybe there was going to be a moment where she's like oh i'm not really sure about this and it was going to like zoom in on her knee or something and then she would end up being fine but no that didn't happen i would have given anything for an oh my knee with a hard zoom in on a knee yeah that would have been it. Wah, wah, wah. that would have been exciting so couldn't have that but there are um a handful of things that i want to talk about okay okay one uh i believe the gym where they have the competition has the pan am logo on it nice i love the pan am logo and i'm oh. genuinely sad that pan am doesn't exist anymore the pan am logo is some madman level like someone thought about it it's and beautiful it's gorgeous yeah absolutely i'm 100 percent with you and like because in catch me when you can't catch me if you can yes uh, when he's transposing the, the mm -hmm. logos on stuff, the whole time I'm just like, that's a good ass logo right it's a there. It's a great logo. Yeah. What does American Airlines have? That stupid fucking bird made of two colors? Looks like ass. Looks like ass compared because Pan Am? Pan Am. Somehow makes you feel like you're going to have a good flight. Just looking at the logo, you're like, oh, this one's going to be so that's, smooth. That's the weird thing is like, why didn't anyone buy Pan Am and then just become Pan Am? I don't Everyone know. Everyone knows Pan Am. Yeah. I don't know. So so there's that. Uh we do we do see a, a scene where this um Kevin Rufus, I think is his name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um you know does does the old classic butt milk prank. Yeah. Um where you make rich girls sit on milk, which actually now that I'm saying it sounds like a very specific kink. Uh, <laughs> i need and, hey is this the service that can get me anything i want <laughs> yeah it is buddy okay can i get several rich girls and a bunch of milk I, <laughs> whoa buddy <laughs> hey, no 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 no. <laughs> hang on <laughs> but they sit on these milk cartons and milk blasts forth from their asses yeah and then they get mad and then he turns around and says i thought cats liked milk he has some crazy one-liners in this movie. That doesn't make any sense. Nope. That doesn't make a lick of sense, Luke. Nope. It's their butts. He made it's it look butts. like they diarrhea milk, which is yeah. funny. It's I'll just pretty that. good. <laughs> yeah. But I thought cats liked milk. Huh? -huh? I don't know. Because it. Know. My first thought was like, oh, is he making a like a pussy comment? I think it's a pussy joke. But it's coming from their butts. Maybe at this point in Canadian history, sex ed was no, not no super good. good. Yeah. I don't know. And up to this point, we have we don't have any evidence that he's fucked. True. So maybe his exposure to different anatomy is mm. very limited. That could be true. And he thinks that there's sort of a cloaca situation. Maybe. Um, the other is we have okay let me let me prioritize these um at one point uh robin says that she's gonna blow them out of their shoes um which a bad phrase b sounds like me down at the bus station now <laughs> um i think i think i'm gonna save the one that that i find most fascinating last okay the second most fascinating is the the whole sex scene. The oh, whole, it's amazing! The whole fuck sequence yeah. is wild. It's and nuts. It's so weird. It feels like a completely different movie because everything's got this like soft blue lighting as mm -hmm. they are very sensually like undressing each other. Yeah, and then they fuck, um, and then we get like this buzz like again. This whole thing has felt like an after-school special, so like pretty hokey, pretty tame, until she finds one of his porn magazines, 
and is looking at the centerfold. And then she, standing stark naked, holds up the picture of boobs, nude boobs, in front of her own boobs. Yeah. Just dead on barreling the camera doing this. Yeah. So weird, man. The it is fuck so weird. was going on in the 80s? I don't know, because it almost feels like this is the same guy, by the way, that did prom night. Um if you want to oh. if you want to listen to us talk about me and Jackie talk about prom night, go check out the horror hut episode we did on that one uh while you were on parental leave. Mm-hmm. Um another great Canadian flick. Um he said sarcastically. <laughs> um yeah, so here's the deal with that sex scene. It almost feels like they brought in someone who does softcore porn. Yes. And they're like it's a totally different director. Mm-hmm. But they were trying to inject some whimsy or like some humor into the situation, but like mm-hmm. erotic humor. Yes. Absolutely. I don't know. I just don't know who that scene's for. Like it what did, it, what it, emotion is it meant to evoke? Yeah, it didn't do anything for me. Yeah. Um, I like he's not here today, but I I feel like the boner inspector would be uh, deeply disappointed. Oh yeah, he, he skipped the houses. He skipped both our houses today mm-hmm. because you know there's no point. Well, that and we uh, painted our our uh, our entryway with goat. Uh oh. Huh? Uh oh. Do you think that's what keeps the boner inspector away? <laughs> I think it would keep anybody away, my guy. <laughs> so, is that why I haven't gotten any of my packages? Yeah, that's why your mail doesn't show up anymore. <laughs> and my DoorDash orders are just left at the street. Yeah, I would do the same, honestly. <laughs> yeah. And then I need to I need to talk about the most horrifying scene. Mm-hmm. The weirdest, most distressing scene in the movie. The hot dog scene, right? Yeah. What the fuck is with the hot dog? <laughs> the hot dog scene. <laughs> What is with the hot dog scene? Because he like puts so much ketchup on. It. Yeah. He like slathers this fucking thing in ketchup. And then he puts what I think is relish on it, but it looks like industrial sludge. Yeah. Yeah. And then the whole time they keep showing her yes. watching him do this. And she's like laughing and confused. And like a little scared. And a little scared. <laughs> It's just a hot dog. He's just fucking up a hot dog. He's going ham. And then he does like a shitload of onions. Like a lot of onions, uh, like people. A large <laughs> onions worth of diced onions. Yeah. And it's, then she laughs a lot. And then she's like, ha 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 ha. And it's like, hey, no. No, this is a him, red flag. Did we see him eat the hot dog? No. No, we didn't. I don't yeah, think so. Because it's so. not possible. Yeah. This is a hot dog you throw at Ronald Reagan. What was the point of the hot dog? Also, I love that Reagan joke. Sorry, that (laughs) just registered. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, fucking A, that's good. Like, because it's not... (laughs) This can't be Chekhov's dog, you know? Because it never comes back. But look, it has haunted me. Yeah. This fucking hot, like, and I th- I think what gets me more than anything is how bad the relish looks. Yeah. It's cause... this, like, weird gray. Yeah. Like, brackish. Which is not, you don't want a brack, is it, is it just, like, gravy? Like, pickle gravy? But, like, it's so thick, and, like, it can't be gravy because it's not, like, it's not viscous enough. Yeah, that's it, a good point. It looks like there's a lot of hair in it. Yeah, which Ted Cruz would be all about. Ted Cruz would love that. Yeah, he'd, he'd be all over a love hair it. dog. A hair dog? Especially a hair dog while he pisses down his leg because he likes the warm feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, that's that's how Ted Cruz would like to go out. I think Eating so. a hair dog, pissing his pants because he likes the warm feeling as it runs down his leg. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you like a hot dog? Chicago style. 
I was about oh. to talk about this actually. Okay, f- full board Chicago style. Yeah, I'm so hungry. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah, I'm I'm pretty hungry. <laughs> I'm pretty hungry. And now I'm just thinking about Chicago dogs. Oh, I love a Chicago dog. But the problem mm-hmm. is I was in Chicago at the the baseball stadium mm-hmm. watching a game, which we already talked about that. It wasn't a fun yeah. time. Yeah, because baseball's um, a boring sport. Because baseball needs to be a banana ball. Um and they had so many Chicago dogs, but not for the gluten-free crowd. They just gave you a sausage in a bun. Mm-hmm. That was it. So I, I had to walk around with my sad little hot dog mm-hmm. watching other people eat Chicago dogs. Uh, I love a Chicago dog. What's what's your preferred hot dog arrangement? So I do generally like a Chicago style. Yeah. Uh, the sport peppers tend to be too much for me. I was going to ask sports. you about the... Yeah, the peppers would be challenging. Yeah. So um I tend to like uh some some mustard, classic yellow mustard, uh some diced onion. Uh a lot of relish has bell peppers in it. I can't do bell peppers. They do not yeah. like me. So I just dice up a pickle, put that on there. And then for feeling froggy, a little bit of celery salt. I think every oh. hot dog benefits from some celery salt. Yes, it does. Holy shit, that's an amazing idea well it comes it, it that's part of the chicago dog yeah but i've been salt. but i've been over here just eating hot dogs like not chicago style like if i just eat a hot dog at the house mm-hmm. i haven't i ain't been putting celery salt on these things you gotta do the celery salt i didn't it did the thought that i could do that did not even occur to me yeah yeah no you gotta i also honestly love a chili dog i haven't had one in a long time but i do actually really like a chili dog Chili dog's pretty good. Yeah. Um. Do Do you have any other thoughts about this movie? Not really. Okay. No. Um. Should a state or country's capital be in the center of it, the geographic center? This is an interesting segue. Yeah. I think so. I think it makes the most sense. It makes the most sense because when you've got a capital that's like way the hell off. Mm-hmm. to the side it just doesn't feel very good it feels can, bad man i can sometimes get it if it's like a port city right because you know the importance of that uh sorry the import importance of that yeah um but if it's just like kind of on the edge but not like not a port not on a yeah. river it's just sort of out there what the fuck are you doing Come on. I don't know, man. Gotta be in the center. Makes some yeah. more sense. Like Little Rock, Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Smack dab in the middle, man. Bada bing. Um, cu- couple other things. Okay. But we forgot to celebrate our fourth birthday. Oh, shit. Seriously? We've been doing this four years. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, no. Years. When was our birthday? Um, I believe... We first recorded on July 4th, 2020. That sounds right. That does because sound right. Because we moved into this house uh, shortly before that. Yeah. So, um, more important than America's birthday, it's Hanksy Panksy's birthday. It's the birth of Hanksy Panksy. Mm-hmm. Um, which I do just want to say really quickly, I feel like I've said this a lot recently, but it mm-hmm. keeps happening. Folks, the numbers are crazy this month uh are they? i have not looked there you guys are listening and i am so over the moon about that so anyway this is just a quick aside to be like i, I log in and check it every now and then mm-hmm. i've been checking a lot lately and things just keep going up and up so well hot damn thank y'all yeah i can't thank y'all enough for like showing up mm-hmm. for this four-year-old podcast <laughs> where we watch movies by in sequential order for any given actor yeah. so and then spend 42 minutes talking about uh actual actual know, the, history the, yeah the actual history yeah um would you like uh mail time oh i would love mail time all right well let me pull it up here this one is from daniel okay and the subject is get to mowing um and Daniel writes, okay, so first, lawns are terrible, bringing them local flowers and ish, but I also love a good lawn and mowing, so I can, so like I contain multitudes. 
Get you a real mower. It takes longer, it requires more pushing and blade adjustment, but hot damn, the grass just loves it. Daniel, listen, I live on a corner lot, and and I have a, a lot of grass. You do have a lot of grass. Um, It is untenable to uh just kind of do like a natural plant thing because it would become a fucking jungle that would be absolutely impenetrable yeah um it looks horrible and it's uh it, it's just it's not fun to live around yeah because because we've tried that before it's it's not workable the other is it's a big lot yeah with with a self-propelled like push mower it takes me easily an hour and a half. Jesus Christ. It's a fucking big lawn. Yeah, it is a pretty big lawn. That is if also you, sloped. It is sloped, which I think is the bigger problem. Yeah. So, um, uh, and now that I think of it, that's an hour and a half when there is the butthole, the lawn butthole, where we yeah. used to have a, a tree, but we, yeah, yeah, yeah. it had to come down and, and the stump got ground. So now there's just a big patch of uh it's a butthole yeah it's a butthole so i don't have to mow that part and it yeah. still takes an hour and a half well if you decide you want to take up daniel's challenge i have a fisker reel mower mm -hmm. that for obvious reasons gets no use yeah um because <laughs> it doesn't work if the grass is too tall mm -hmm. and my grass my dude frequently is too tall oh but i saw you mowing yesterday Oh, you did? Yeah, I got out mowing. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I was driving by while you were mowing. Did not um, notice. I was jamming out to some some metal. Nice. Had the metal going, so I, I have no clue. I have not been able to mow because my mower is being repaired. Yeah, so if you want my backup Fisker, and if you hate yourself. <laughs> so it has gotten so hot, um, even by like 8 in the morning, that I now have to mow my yard in three chunks i did notice that yeah because yeah. um the last time i tried doing all of it um i legitimately thought i was gonna pass out yeah i i came into the house i could hear my pulse in my ears oh that's um, heat exhaustion baby you gotta I be felt careful like absolute shit yeah so uh, i now i now do three chunks yeah, because I did the whole front yard yesterday. The backyard remains a mystery. It's a forest needs to be solved. Um, but I did the whole front yard. I was gonna spray pesty, like my pest control. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do it. it was done. It's too and hot. it was like nine in the morning, like nine thirty or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't get the job done because it you, was so fucking hot. You pretty much have to be back inside the house by ten. Yeah, agreed. Like today. That's where I'm at. We're indoors. Yeah. Yeah. Um so so yeah, I I hate that I I have this lawn and that I have to maintain grass because it's terrible for the environment, it's terrible for like water consumption and it's not natural. Like I I get all that. There are not a lot of workable opera uh, alternatives for me. For sure. For sure, for sure. So, AstroTurf. No, see that's worse. Yeah, it is worse. It's worse for the environment in every way possible, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so sure. this is what I have. Is there more mail? Or is that, no, that that was it? Okay, great. Um, well, Luke, do you want to talk about uh what's happening next? Yeah. So um uh, yeah, if I I guess if you want me to spearhead this one. Um so that's it, folks, for season three. I mean, we're we're done yes um we we got this last little final chapter prologue knocked out um and thank you guys so much for riding along with us while we watched every keanu reeves movie for, mm -hmm. for better or worse often mostly worse. worse yeah yeah mostly worse um well next your boys are gonna take a quick break mm -hmm. uh sam's got a busy old august coming up yes uh and uh we're gonna take a little bit of a break so like a month month and a half um so you'll you won't get us for a couple episodes uh but i'll probably do a feed drop horror hut is out uh okay. it's pumping out episodes we've got another one coming up soon where we're gonna do Shaun of the dead and long legs nice a twofer um so i may do a feed drop just to promote that a little bit and give you guys some new content 
and maybe some other stuff as we're on hiatus we'll figure mm-hmm. some things out but sam do you want to break apart what we're actually going to do when we come back for the palate cleanser because i feel like you might have it nailed better sure um so uh for for our newer listeners um in between seasons luke and i require a palate yeah. cleanser yeah <laughs> um, yeah we do and never have we needed it more than now yeah um the palate cleansers are uh, a, a menu of sorts uh, devised by my wife mm-hmm. um who has created i think like 12 it's a lot of categories 12 categories of movies um previous palate cleansers have been um disaster movies which is great. Uh, Hexy Panksy, it's a disaster. And then um, the other one was... Did we name it? Romance? Was it rom-coms? It was romance movies. I don't know if we named it. You did do a lot of smooching, though. There, yeah. was, a, there was an intro where you smooched a lot. Yeah, I, I remember I was doing a lot of kisses. Yeah. But I don't remember... I don't remember the name of that it. one. Yeah. So <laughs> we did a lot of rom-coms. And then we did uh, Twilight and then uh, all the Fifty Shades movies. Yeah. Um, so uh, this time, uh, and previously, we have just rolled the dice and picked <laughs> randomly. Not this time. Luke and I could not take our chances with that. Nope. So after our our hiatus, Luke and Sam, as you know them, will not be coming back yeah instead you will be listening to lady philomena crump amazing and i will be lady brumble bumble mm, as we will be doing hanksy banksy pretty pretty princess mm-hmm. mm, princess <laughs> movies <laughs> So Which, if you're wondering that. what the fuck that means, you're just gonna have to come back, baby. Yeah, you have to ride that wave with us. So, uh, so look forward to that. Um, until then, uh, you can find us on Facebook at Hanksy Panksy Podcast. You can find us on Instagram at Hanksy Panksy Pod. You can send us an email at Hanksy Panksy Pod at gmail.com. Uh, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Hanksy Panksy. Uh, Ken and I have gone through, um, uh, we, we've wrapped up the uh, Boy Meets World uh, series. Uh, at some point, we're going to start macking at the movies. Uh, and then, Luke, you and I soon are going to be ranking all of uh, Keanu's flicks. Very true. Yeah. So, only on uh, Patreon can you get only the on Keanu Patreon. ranking. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, chuck us some money. Uh, you chuck us enough, you can be one of Hanks' heroes like Tuck and Daniel. And, fellas, I will sit on milk for you. <laughs> Love it. Luke, do you have a final quote? I have a final something, and this Ooh. time it is 80s music. So I'm just going to go. Yeah. <laughs> what a way to, to end season three. Folks, thank you so much for listening to uh, season three of Hanksy Panksy Honor Among Reeves. And uh, we'll see you eventually.